On Saturday afternoons, if I didn't go to the movies at the Imperial or the Capitol Theater on Bank Street, I lay on the couch and caught the Metropolitan Opera, listening to a voice telling me wonderful stories. I loved Rigoletto and La Boheme and Madame Butterfly. I was taking piano lessons, but I never spoke of music to Miss Jameson, she of the patch over one eye and the swollen left arm that intrigued me more than playing chords. That wasn't music. That was piano lessons, which, like ballet, would prepare me to live a civilized life in this new world where we found ourselves and where someone might just ask me to play the happy farmer. My mother encouraged me to see an Italian film version of the opera La Traviata at the Elgin. But she didn't encourage me to the extent of going with me. I went by myself. I was stunned by the story. And when I came home, my mother seemed to know it. She had seen Garbo and Camille several times and said crisply, it's good as a story, but no woman should live her life that way. My father would read a story to me every night. I remember the tale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, who lured all the children away to an unknown place. I thought he looked both appealing and scary. I don't hear anything from Often my father would put away the fairy tale book and tell me a story about us. He would tell me that when I was grown up, the two of us would go to the opera together. He described, probably from a picture that he had seen, the rows of balconies covered in gold and thick red curtains and the place where hundreds of people played in an orchestra. Everyone went to the opera, he said, because they all knew each other and could enjoy something together and have fun. There would be ice creams, like Eskimo pies we bought at Dawson's Drugstore, only in miniature. We would sit in a box on the right-hand side of the orchestra, at the front of the box. I would sit on the outside, so that people could see me. I would wear a long red velvet gown and have a very tiny diamond necklace and teardrop earrings from Burke's, and my hair pulled back like Evita Peron. And where will I put the stole while I'm watching the opera, I would ask. And he would answer, we will drape it over the back of your chair so that when you lean back against it, you'll look as though you're framed by it. This, my father promised me, was what my future held. My father didn't like music and never expressed an opinion on opera but he made me feel that I was entitled to go, that I could arrive there from our tiny apartment to wear the red dress, to eat the ice cream, and I have, which is what he intended, which is what he dreamed for me.